So now that I'm all suited up, and I'm staying suited because I don't have a helper, Mark is doing something with our horse trailer. So it's my job to go in here, find the honeybound brood frames, and to take them out so that we can harvest the honey. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, guys. Stick with me. You're gonna see I'm gonna be putting in empty frames, and that's so that the bees have new frames to build so that the queen can lay her eggs in them. So I'm gonna be shaking nectar. It could be really dirty. This is my first time doing this. So I'm gonna to try to keep the honey as clean as I can. Got my smoke and we're ready to go. We think the reason that our hives became honey bound is that they both swarm. So in that small period, in a break of royalty ruling over all, that the worker bees filled in the brood cells with honey rather than leaving them open for brood. So there's literally no place, if any, for this queen to lay her eggs. So we have to go ahead, harvest honey, and shake nectar to make room for her to actually do her job as a queen, which is make more babies. So make sure I don't have the queen on here. Looking for the queen really quick. There's none. I'm just gonna take this one and leave this out here. So she's been up here, she's in the brood, so there's some brood up here. I'm just trying to find all the stuff that has no brood, it's fully capped honey. That's all I'm interested in today. Oh, she's been working. I might not even really need to do this, guys. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. I may have just gotten in here last week and they may be correcting themselves. That's a beautiful frame of just fruit. Oh, wall to wall. Guys, I may have been wrong. I may have been wrong. So how is it that I could have been so wrong last week thinking that this colony was honey bound? Well, the really quick answer to that is Mother Nature. Mother Nature knows how to correct things. The few days leading up to this inspection, it rained for four solid days. So I'm guessing in that time, they ate through a lot of these doors, freeing up the cells for the queen to do her job. So I'm shaking all of this nectar and nectar is basically honey in the works. They put all this nectar here to kind of build up their stores for the winter. But in doing so, they're stalling out their own population. So I'm shaking the nectar so that the queen can have empty brood cells to lay her eggs and create more worker bees to make more stores. It's like raining nectar. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my gosh, guys, watch. Look at that. We'll let a newer hive pot have this grown comb and give them an empty one. These guys are established. We need room for the queen to lay eggs. They are not as established. They can use that. These guys have more than enough stores. They're going to be just fine. So I don't mind doing that. Well, uh, you guys, I don't know if you can see, see all the nectar? We had a lot of frames to shake nectar out of. But, one of our hives definitely was honey bound, and it was the Buckeye hive. And we've got some, I took a lot of the, a big amount of the honey super from the CC hive because they're just, they're booming, their queen's showing, that she's gonna, she's back to laying, they ate through a lot of their stores, so, are a lot of their stores in their brood cells. So I decided to go ahead and take a couple frames of the Honey Super and let them work on that. I probably will leave them alone. This will probably be the only bit of honey I take from them unless for some reason they become honey bound again towards um, late summer. So I'm gonna show you guys here in just a little bit how to harvest honey without a honey extractor. 
So in order to do the crush and strain method, I've got this food grade pail, along with a honey gate, a strainer, a metal spatula, someplace comfortable to sit, and you can see that I've got these beautiful frames of honey. So you can see that I have the strainer over my five gallon food grade bucket, and I've got this wonderful frame of honey that I'm going to take the metal spatula and I'm going to run it down the foundation of this frame, scraping the wax and honey and all into the strainer below. That's when you're going to start crushing it and you'll let gravity take over. You'll see I'm wearing rubber gloves and that's just to keep the sticky situation at bay because the cleanup for all this is going to be pretty messy. You can see here, that we're going to start crushing this and letting it seep through to the strainer. If you want to quicken this process, you can always get a blow dryer like I've got here, anything that you could get from the drugstore, and just lightly heat up your wax and honey so that the honey becomes a little bit more fluid and strains much easier. But be careful not to heat it up too much so that you melt your wax completely. And just look at that liquid gold straining through. You can strain your honey as much as you want to get it as clean as you'd like. We're going to be saving our wax in these buckets because you can render it and give it back to the bees or use it for other things. And just like that, we got our first honey harvest ever from the CC Hive and the Buckeye Hive. It's gorgeous, it's very light honey, it tastes just like clover and honeysuckle, and we sold out in about a day and a half. It wasn't too bad to do without a honey extractor either. The crush and strain method is great, it just takes a little bit more time and patience, and you saw we sped that up a little bit with a hair dryer, held it a good distance so that we didn't melt the wax too much or damage the quality of our honey. So, I think that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks for coming while we shook out nectar and harvested our first batch of honey. And I'm sure there'll be another batch this year, judging by some of the hive inspections that we've had. So until next time, I hope that you're all staying healthy out there and being kind to one another. Catch you in the next one. Bye, y'all.